All right, so you just got done installing a Linux Server Edition and you need to know what to do next. Well, the next step is to learn a few commands in order to be able to navigate yourself around the system. We're gonna learn some basic commands that you can also use in a plain old terminal on Linux as these are the most useful commands for beginners. We're gonna talk about Server Edition some more in a bit, but let's start by learning our first command, PWD. PWD just means Print Working Directory. It tells you where you're currently at located on the file system. So what this is showing me is I'm in the directory signified by slash, which means root, then followed by home, which is the system home directory, and then followed by another slash, savvy nick. So that's the current user that I'm logged in with, savvy nick. PWD is great to let you know where you're currently located on the system. It's an absolute path and is an absolutely great command to understand. The second command we're gonna be talking about is CD. CD allows you to transfer between different directories. So if I wanted to go back a directory, AKA I wanted to go back to the home directory since I'm in home savvy nick, I'll do CD space dot dot. That will take me back one directory as signified by the slash home. And if I do PWD again, the first command we learned, I can now see that I'm in slash home. Fantastic work. You're already starting to navigate the system. So I mentioned going back a directory with dot dot, but how do we go forwards or up a directory? Well, that's simple too. First off, we wanna list what directories we have available to us. So if I do LS, that's the next command or the third command we're learning, LS allows you to list all the contents of the current directory. And as you can see, savvy Nick is blue, meaning it is a folder or directory that you can navigate into by using CD. CD space, and then type in the directory you wanna go into. For my instance, I'm typing in savvy Nick and look at that. Now we're in the home savvy Nick directory. How do I know? Well, I can use PWD again and realize that I've switched directories. You've already learned three of the most powerful commands that you can use as a beginner to navigate the file system. You're already moving up and down directories, but let's talk a little bit about the Linux server editions because most of them come without a GUI, meaning you get the same experience here, a console where you can type into. And the reason for this is basically just to have an optimized environment. Linux server editions are tailored specifically for server tasks. Therefore, they need a lightweight environment that completely gets rid of any GUI components. This helps ensure that you have high performance, stability, and better resource utilization that makes them ideal for situations like hosting services, applications, managing databases, so on and so forth. Of course, you can install a GUI version as well, go into a terminal, use these commands as well, but you're learning how to use a direct console in a server edition of Linux. Fantastic, especially for those of you who are new to admin. Let's continue on with the next command. The fourth command that's gonna be important here is to actually make a directory. So right now in the home users directory is what this is called. That's signified by slash home slash savvy Nick. I'm in the savvy Nick directory and maybe I wanna create a project. Let's say I wanna create a project called simple list. Well, I can do that by doing MKDIR altogether one word. This stands for make directory. You put another space and then you specify what directory you wanna create. Well, I just said simple list. So I'm going to type that out, simple list all one word. I do not like putting spaces while I am creating directories or file names inside of a minimal Linux system like this because it's a lot easier to navigate in the future whenever you're simply typing out paths in the console. It's a little harder to find directories and files whenever you have spaces. Anyways, with this, I press enter and I've created my first directory. How can we check? Let's use the ls command that we had before. And sure enough, simple list now exists in the home users directory. How do I navigate to this one? Well, CD space simple list will take me into that new directory. Fantastic. Now that I'm in the new directory, I'm actually gonna go back. But before I do, I wanna show you clear. Clear allows you to completely get rid of things on this screen. This is not one of the ones I wanna necessarily teach you, but I just wanna make sure that you understand what I'm using here. So clear just gets rid of everything on the console, starts the buffer at the top. That way you have more room to type and things look a little neater. I usually use this in order to just clean things up. We're really getting through these. The next one I wanna teach you is a bit more complicated, but stick with me as we're gonna create our first file here in the simple list directory. How do we know we're in simple list again? PWD is gonna show us we're in home, savvy Nick, simple list. Fantastic. Now that we've verified that, we can go and create our first file. Let's use the base editor here. That's already pre-installed for us, at least on Ubuntu server. If it's not installed on your particular system, you can go and get it with another command that I'm gonna show you towards the end. But we're gonna make an assumption that you do have it. Try to type nano and then press space. You can now specify the name of the file that you want to access. Since we don't have a file, we're just gonna create one and I'm gonna call this main.cpp. And now when I press enter, you'll notice at the top it says main.cpp. Nano is a text editor that's available 
and easy to use on a lot of Linux systems. This is the first text editor that I'm showing you. I typically use Vim. You can use Emacs, Vim, whatever you like. But since we're assuming this is for beginners, I wanna show you one of the easiest ones to use first. That way you don't get too confused. In here, we can start writing our main CPP function. This is a C++ file. Of course, you can make it a text file. You can make whatever you want. I'm just giving you an example of creating a new file. And in order to do this, I'm just gonna go int main and pretend to write some sort of a function here. Now let's see, I'm gonna return zero, put a semicolon there. This doesn't necessarily work, but you kind of understand what's going on. So how do I access this? Well, you can just use the up and down arrows to find a line that you wanna start writing in and then just start typing like you normally would. Again, I typed in int space main space parentheses here and then did the return zero. You can type anywhere you want. Just remember to use the up and down arrows to do this. If you wanna get rid of something, just backspace like you normally would. It's very easy to use this. That's why I'm showing you how to kind of use nano as a command and as a text editor right off the bat. Because how else do you start using your system besides editing and creating files yourself? Now to save this one very easy, we're gonna press the control key, hold that down and then press the X key to exit. It's gonna say, save modified buffer. You have two choices, Y or N. If you type in Y, that's gonna automatically save. And it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. File name to write, well, it was called main CPP. That's what we cre created. And if you wanna keep it that, you just press enter. And boom, we're back to the console and I can start typing my commands again. Do not let the buffer fool you into thinking you're still into the file that you created because above it looks like GNU Nano 7.2 is opened up with main CPP. It's not. If I type in clear, the buffer is cleared and the console looks like what we were using earlier. Fantastic work. If you're enjoying this video so far and you like learning about Linux, make sure to subscribe below and hit that like button for me to get more videos like this. You're doing a great job so far. Let's keep continuing on because I want to show you how to edit this file as well. If I do ls, now you'll notice I have a main.cpp file. How do we edit that file? Let's say a file already exists, maybe a text file, maybe a CSV file, whatever file you can try to open it with nano, the text editor. You type in nano space and then specify that name. I'm gonna give you a big hint right now. If you wanna start auto filling a name, you can start by just simply typing the first letter, for example, and then just simply pressing tab. That'll auto fill as much as it can to match a file that's currently located in the directory that you are. So since we have main.cpp, that's the only main CPP file located in here. It's the only file with, with a starting letter of M. It automatically filled that main CPP, saving me a lot of keystrokes. I can just press enter. And look at that, we open the file up again, and we can continue to make edits to this. Once we're done, remember control X, saves and exits, and I'm going to clear once more before moving on to the next command. So far, just to recap, we've learned how to list the contents of a directory with ls, we learn how to change directories with CD. We can print the current working directory so we know where we're at with PWD. We can make a directory with MKDIR, and we can use nano to open up or create new files. The next one we're gonna learn about is how to remove a file or directory. Let's say I wanna do a little bit of cleanup. I don't need main CPP anymore. I'm done working with it. I can type in rm space and then type in main.cpp. This will remove the file from the system. Now be very careful with this one. Remove is a very powerful command that can delete anything and everything on your system. Therefore, double check, triple check whether you have the correct file or directory selected. I know I do. I'm gonna remove this one by simply typing this and pressing enter. And then I'm gonna list the contents with ls. And look at that, no more file exists in this current directory where we had it. I'm also gonna delete the simple list directory. Well, how do I do that? Well, you can't delete a directory if you're already inside it. So I'm gonna to have to go back one directory. Remember, cd space dot dot will go back one directory. Fantastic, ls shows us that we have simple list available to us. Now I'm gonna use the remove command to remove a directory because it's different than removing a file. How do we do this? We do rm space dash r and then space, we type the directory name. Again, use that tab feature if you want to really quickly fill the name in as you're typing. Anyways, what does the dash r mean? It just means remove recursively aka the contents and all the contents inside of a folder. By pressing enter, this will remove simple list from the savvy nick home user directory, press enter, and look at that, the directory is now gone and we've cleaned up the system. All right, now that there's no more directories here, I'm gonna create a new one. So we go back to mkdir, and this time I'm going to create a directory called copy one. Press enter and do list, copy one now exists. The reason I made copy one is I wanna show you how to copy a directory as our next command. I believe we're on number seven now, and that is copying files or directories. 
How do we do that? Well, let me show you. First, I'm going to clear things out so we can see things better. Next, I'm going to type in CP space. Again, we're going to use that special flag, dash R, and then another space, followed by the directory that we want to copy. If you press tab twice, that's going to show you the entire contents of the current location that you're in, aka I'm in the home user savvy Nick directory, and it shows me bash logout, bash RC, cache, copy one, local profile, SSH, and sudo as admin successful. Now you might be asking yourself, why didn't I see all those before? Well, anything with a dot is a hidden file. It doesn't automatically show up when you do a list or ls, command. I'm going to show you how to get a list with all the hidden files as well, but these hidden files are really user specific, so it just keeps track of some user information. It doesn't really need to be seen by the user at any given time, unless you're doing some special things. One that you might interact with is the bash RC file. So I'm going to show you how to copy that one after I show you how to copy a directory. So let's first do that. First, we're going to copy the directory copy one to copy two. So I'm going to type in CP space dash R space copy one. And then that's the directory I want to copy. And I'm just going to make a copy in the same directory. You can make it in a different directory as well, but I'm just going to do copy two. What this is going to do is in this current directory, we're just going to make a copy of copy one into a brand new copy two. Let's do that. After I press enter, I can list and notice we now have two directories. Exactly the same. Any of the contents that were in copy one are going to be in copy two. We didn't have any, but that's how that works. So I can navigate into either of them by doing CD space copy and then specifying which one I want. So I'm going to do copy two list and now I'm in there. If I do PWD, notice I'm in I'm in home seven copy two. If I go back. Now I can see copy one and copy two. I personally like this more than using the move command because with the move command, it's a little easier to mess up. But when you make a copy, you're just making a copy of that directory or file that you're messing with. So I'm not going to even show you move at this point, maybe in the future. But right now, I think copy is going to get you 99% there without having the ability to mess things up because you're only making copies. It's a little safer than using a move command, which could technically overwrite a file. With copy, that's a little harder to do. I'm going to show you how to do the file copy now. If I do clear and I do ls dash al, this is a new flag. This just means all and then list. Now we're going to see those special files that I talked about before with even more information. What this is telling us from left to right is at the far left, we have what permissions we're using. Then we have what user and what group has control over the specific files. For example, the first line says savvy Nick, savvy Nick and a dot at the end. That just means the current directory is owned by Savvy Nick and in group Savvy Nick. Below that, you see root root, which just means back one directory is owned by the root user and is in group root. So only the root user can make changes to that specific location. Everything else is owned by Savvy Nick. So Savvy Nick can make those changes and that's who I'm logged in as currently. So I can actually make a copy of the bash RC file. And why do I want to do that? Well, bash RC actually gives you the ability to edit some of the user's system preferences when the system is booting up. So it might be one of those files that you want to change, but you want to make a backup copy before you edit the actual bash RC file. So let's do that with our newfound knowledge. We can do CP. We're going to type in dot bash RC. And you might be asking, why didn't we do dash R with this one? Well, it's because it's a file. A file does not require you to copy recursively. Therefore, I don't need the dash R. I'm just going to use dot bash RC. You'll notice that things in blue are directories. Things in white here are files. So I know bash RC is just a file. I'm going to do a space and then I'm going to do dot bash RC. And then I'm just going to do backup at the end there. This is going to be my backup. If I screw things up, I can easily get my backup copy back into back bash RC. So I press enter and I made a mistake. It says no file or directory. That's because I misspelled bash. So I'm going to hit the up arrow, which gets me my last command back. It's really an awesome key. So make sure you understand that. You can keep doing the bat up arrow to look at previously used commands as well. Just make sure you know that. I'm going to change this C to an S, and that should help me copy that file correctly. Press thinner, and sure enough, I have two bash RC files now, one called bash RC and one called bash RC backup. Fantastic. So how do we open up that file? We can do nano space dot bash RC and press enter and look at that. Now I can look through this file and make edits and changes as I see fit. One of the changes here that I like to personally make is if we go down to the history size, this tells you how many commands are saved in history before they get overwritten. You can change this to some other number, for example, 10 times the amount and give it 10 times the amount of file size. Therefore, you can save plenty of 
commands as you're learning how to use the Linux command line system. We're getting really close to finishing things up. I'm gonna exit out of this one without saving this time. So control X and it completely goes out by itself. I'm gonna clear things out. Remember that buffer is gonna kind of confuse you there. And since we've learned how to locate where we're currently at, how to move things around, how to create new directories, new files, edit files, list them out and more, I wanna really show you two more commands. One is cat, this is simple. So I'm not getting too far into it. Cat just helps you display in the console a specific file. So let's just do the bash RC file because we already know what's inside of it. If I do cat space that bash RC, that shows me the entire contents of that file. This is better for files that are small because it's a lot easier to see. There's another command called less, which I think is even better for this. So if you do less and you do the exact same thing, so bash RC, now you get to look at the entire file without it just dumping out into the screen. And you can use the up and down arrow to kind of look through that file. It just makes things a lot easier to look at real quick if you wanna scan a file like the bash RC file, instead of it just spilling out on your screen and having no control over it. I personally like using less more than cat. Anyways, if I do Q, that gets me out. And now I'm back to the console. I'm gonna type in clear. And finally, we're gonna learn the very last, probably the most important command as I mentioned before, I'm gonna show you how to install Nano or another text editor, my personal favorite, Vim. But let's go through how to install Nano if you don't have it available to yourself. You can do sudo space apt space install space Nano. Now, apt is specific to Ubuntu based distributions. So since I'm using Ubuntu server, apt is going to work. If apt doesn't work for you, you probably have a different Linux distribution that you're using. Therefore, you should look up what the native package manager is for your system. This is important and learn because this is how you install packages to your system. So if you're missing nano, this is how you would install it. I do sudo apt install nano, press enter. It's asking me for a password now because it's asking for the, the root user, aka the administrative user's password in order to install something on the system. I type in that user's password and if it is an admin, it will install the specific package mentioned. So notice it said nothing was upgraded, nothing was installed, nothing was removed. This is because a nano already exists on the system. If it didn't exist, it would have installed it for you. I'm gonna do sudo apt install again, space, another package. I'm actually gonna install a full server package. And I'm just to show you how easy this is. I'm gonna do something called open SSH server. This is an important package for server editions of Linux because this allows you to remote into the server very easily over SSH. And it's as simple as installing this package, getting the IP address and logging in to this Linux system. It will let you use this exact same setup that we have here, the console terminal setup on a whole nother computer. That's not the one in front of you. When I press enter, you'll see a few things scroll across the screen. It's telling you what it has to install additionally in order to get this package to work on your system. And it's very transparent with you. So it says the following new packages will be installed, libwrap zero and curses term, open SSH server, open SSH SFTP server and SSH import ID. Below you, it says, do you want to continue? This is important to understand. If you press enter, it will continue the installation. Y is capital because that means it's the default answer. N is the non-default answer in this one because it's lowercase. You can either type Y or N at this point, depending on whether or not you want to install things. I'm just going to press Y to show you how it works. After I press Y, boom, things go through. It installs. And now we have that package. We actually have OpenSSH server now running in the background. I'm not going to get further into this one, but you can watch one of my other videos if you're very interested in how to get this remote setup working. Congratulations on learning some of the most important commands here in Linux, especially for the server edition and how to navigate a Linux system. You're becoming a pro admin user, and I hope you continue this journey in learning Linux, especially if you're messing around with dev, servers, or just need a pure performance-based solution for an enterprise level project. I'm glad you made it this far. And if you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.